Hi, I'm Rob. Um, I was working with Project Delta, where we produced a interactive FPGA circuit simulator. Um, our main aim was to uh, use the DE2 boards for a first-year comp ski to be able to circulate, uh, sorry, simulate digital, digital circuits on a board. Well, there's one major problem with this, that first-years don't have DE2 boards. But if we assume that they do have DE2 boards, um, using the DE2 boards means that we can add switches, we have hardware switches, we have hardware LEDs, we have hex displays, it means that we give a really interactive feel to circuits. It's not something that's abstract, it's actually something you can put your hands on and play with. And it kind of gives you the idea of it being like a real kind of non-abstract thing that you can play with and have a lot of fun with. And we also thought that our simulation software is quite lightweight. Um, we've only included digital components. We haven't got the overhead of adding all these analog components in that just aren't necessary for first year digital electronics. We just we don't really care about them. We just want our digital logic gates. We want RAM. We've got RAMs, we've got ROMs, uh, we've got the standard gates, and we've got D flip flops, RS latches, uh, and things like that. Um, we had a couple of major design, design decisions to make. Uh, we initially decided to use a discrete uh, event-based queue system where um, whenever inputs change on the board, uh, we can detect the inputs have changed and then propagate the event of that change to gates connected to that. And therefore, we don't have to re-evaluate the entire circuit like 200 times per second. We only have to, do, we only have to look at where the changes have occurred. So that means we can develop quite an efficient simulation algorithm. Now, we did have one major problem with our initial specification because we were planning to use um, this open source software called uh, JOP, which allows us to have a Java processor on the DE2 board. However, to our peril, uh, after two weeks, we determined that simulation, uh, sorry, serialization was not possible without weeks worth of coding. So instead, we kind of worked around this problem and we now simulate using a Java thread behind the GUI on the PC, which sends update events to and from the board. And that actually works quite well with the way we've designed our simulation algorithm, because it's change-based anyway. Um, so adding change packets, sending to and from the board, really is not a big deal. And in fact, in some ways, it was probably easier. Um, to compensate for not, having, not being able to detach the board and walk away with it, as you could have if it was simulating by itself, we've also got Verilog translation which is a hardware description language where we can uh, program the board and we can program it permanently so the user can create a digital circuit. Perhaps they can create like an intrusion, intrusion detection, something like that. Um, and they can t plug it, unplug it from the machine and add it, put it out somewhere else, have it plugged in, plug it into batteries or something like that. Now the hardware we used was uh, the DE2 boards. Uh, we did use the JOP software for the daemon that runs on the board, sending back and forth packets. Um, and we had to bodge a serial link on top of the USB blaster cable to avoid having to buy a serial link cable, um, which Ruben very uh, cleverly found a hack to kind of to use the USB blaster cable in that way, um, because the JOP only expects us to be using the serial, the proper serial link rather than the emulated one. Um, and then we've got better basic packet-based communications, very small packets. Uh, I think our largest packet is 56 bar, uh, bytes, I think, where we're sending um, LED states and switch states to and from the PC. Now, our main data structure <coughs> consists of a component graph, which is the circuit, um, which has within it each different, each component also has a circuit. And when we want to simulate, we take the entire component graph, we can convert it into a circuit, and then that is what gets simulated. Uh, the GUI, which to be honest was our main feature because this is quite a done, like a product that's been done several years in a row. So we wanted to make quite a nice GUI. We've got an easy to use drag and drop interface, saving and loading, cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, which all came free with JGraph. Obviously we had to add in our extra code. We've got SVG icons, we've got infinite zooming, we've got an infinite canvas. So technically you could make your circuits as big as you like. Obviously you have memory constraints, uh, etc., and keyboard shortcuts and mnemonics. And we've also got translation into Arabic, um, so we've got right to left, and we've got translation into French, Chinese, Japanese, and obviously English. Uh, there's our final product. Uh, as you can see, quite a nice GUI, um, nice icons, as I do say so myself. Um, and basically a nice user interface to create digital circuits. We're using a hardware board without using hardware description languages directly. All right, thank you.